Good morning, everyone. So I'll be speaking on femtosecond laser assisted keratoplasties. I have no financial disclosures to make in this presentation. So it won't be wrong to call femtosecond laser as the new scalpel in ophthalmologist hand. And with this new device, we can do cataract, LASIK, keratoplasties, and whatnot. So everywhere you will find some or other role of femtosecond laser nowadays. So femtosecond laser is basically a photo disruptive infrared laser with a power of 10 to power of minus 15. And it is, it works on the principle of photo disruption in which thousand of laser pulses are connected together in a raster pattern to define a resection plane. And similarly, vertical planes are created. And once it, it, it got cut, then this gas is absorbed and the resection plane is created. So if we talk about manual keratoplasty, it is a time-tested, most successful organ transplant. Although the challenges are so many, like uh, high astigmatism, the problem with the trephination, sizing, ledge, the problem is suturing, how much tension to apply on doing suturing, the correct technique, there is significant endothelial cell loss in penetrating keratoplasty, high expectation from the patient, and after all these, delayed visual rehabilitation. So, so to overcome most of the problems, we have femtosecond laser, which gives significantly better results in terms of these points. So femtosecond laser has the ability to perform incision of any angle at various depths within the corneal tissue. It permits full thickness, graft with peripheral laminar wound configuration, you can create any shape with femtosecond laser, like top hat, mushroom, zigzag, and other configurations. So how to choose which type of shape should be done in which kind of problem, like top hat shape? It removes less stromal tissue and more abnormal endothelial tissue. So it will be a good, a good shape for the PBK cases. And mushroom shape removes more abnormal stromal tissue and save more endothelial tissue. So keratoconus will be a good choice for this shape and in the zigzag it provides excellent bone seal provides because the angle angled edge provides a smooth transition between the host and donor so the opposition is good so can be tried in any cases so if we compare the image of oct at one week between the manual and femto you can see the graft and donor it's attached very nicely because of this configuration cut but in the manual the edges are usually bunched up in the initial post-op period so now we have different platforms which provide the opportunity to do femtosecond laser like intra fem, LDV and wave light. So, so this is the video of femtosecond keratoplasty done in a case of corneal scar. So with the newer machines you can play with the energy, increase the energy so you can cut the corneal scars also. The, in the old machines it's difficult to cut the scars but with the new machines you can cut it. So once the recipient, uh, patient's cornea is cut, now this is a donor. It's better to remove the epithelium to have a better docking. And this is a Femto LDV, Z8 machine, which I'm working on. And this has intraoperative OCT, in which you can see how much you're going to cut, what sh shape you're going to get. And just simply you have to peel it off, no, no tissue bridges. And this was a complicated case and went very well. You can see the cut area, it nicely fit, the donor and host nicely fit to, with each other. So this is another case of keratoconus. Again, the, you can shape the pattern cut here. The advantage with the femtosecond laser is that suture strength need not to be very tight. It has to be normal strength sutures. The length of the suture is slightly smaller than the manual keratoplasty because you don't need so much of tension in the sutures. And chances of overriding or underriding is not possible with the pattern cut. You can see the opposition there. It nicely fits. So this is a post-op picture. So suturing, uh, conventionally we do 16 sutures in most of the cases, but with femtosecond laser, I prefer to do 12 sutures, although I've tried 8 sutures with fibrin adhesive, but I still recommend 12 sutures is sufficient with a femtosecond penetrating keratoplasty. And uh, Sir has already covered the role of femtosecond laser in glamular keratoplasty. 
many cases you cannot do with the microkeratome because you cannot measure the exact depth how much you want to cut but with the interoperative OCT and femtosecond laser you can customize your cut and get the exact plane in which you need to be cut. So this is another interesting case of post smile lenticular retention you can see the scarring there and this patient came to me and uh, I took this patient for this hemi automated lamellar keratoplasty. So with the femtosecond laser, you can design the cut pattern also. So I made a donut shaped cut in this case. So you can see the, there is a cut all around the scar. The scar was very dense, so I, it was cut here. And we get the resection plane all around in the same plane. After that, you can combine it with the manual procedure because the plane is same all around. So you'll get, you'll go in a one plane only. It won't be a multiplaner. And this is a donor. While lifting, we have to be very careful. Sometimes tissue bridges are there. So we need to manually separate those. And uh, once it is done, then the suturing. So suturing is done. And uh, this is a post-operative picture. You can see the scar is gone. The position is very nice. And uh, the result was good. And with the new, the Zimmer machine has a software for DALK. So as, we, as a corneal surgeon, we all know that the, in DLK, the main problem is to achieve the big bubble. You're not sure whether you're going to get big bubble or not. It's always unpredictable. So with, with this software, you can create a tunnel also in the posterior stroma. And you can decide the width of the tunnel, the length of the tunnel, the angulation, the position where you're comfortable. And you, you have to leave around 30 microns behind to push the air. And once you create the tunnel, everything on the OCT, so you're sure that where your tunnel is, how long is your tunnel, and then go with the, and this is a separation, uh, removal of stromal tissue, and this is the tunnel you can see here. And then go with the four glass cannula and inject air. So probability of getting air bubble is quite high, the big bubble is quite high with this software. And then rest of the step is similar. So femtosecond is also helping us doing the DLK now. And this is one procedure which you cannot do with manual keratoplasty only. This is a lenticular insertion in cases of uh, advanced keratochorus. Because you cannot create a pocket with the, any manual uh, device. So you have to use femtosecond laser. So for thinner corneas like 320 microns, 330 microns, you can create a pocket here. And then open up the pockets. And then this is a lenticule of another patient of known thickness. And you just push, you have to push the lenticule in the pocket. Make sure that the lenticule is nicely set in the, sitting in the pocket, not in a wound. And once you secure the lenticule, the job is done. It's a very simple procedure. You know at what depth you're putting the lenticule. The procedure is quite simple. And then remove the epithelium, go for epi of cross-linking to get the good result of cross-linking also. So no need to go for hypotonic or epion cross-linking with this lenticule. You can do the procedure. So in conclusion, femtosecond laser gave new dimension to keratoplasty techniques, early visual rehabilitation, less astigmatism, ease of doing surgeries are the main benefits of femtosecond keratoplasty. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Bupes. Uh, since uh, you are doing this uh, femto assisted PK since a, a, a long time, so what is the proportion of cases in your practice that you prefer uh, femto PKP? So, and uh, what are the factors that yeah. really uh, discourages the patient to go for a femto PKP? So, uh, my first choice for all optical keratoplasties are femto only. As a private practitioner, I always offer femto second laser option. So, in cases of a very dense scar, 
or repeat graft or vascularization i sometimes offer the uh, manual keratoplasty also or may the main indication for manual is the financial grounds because many patients cannot afford because this charge more 50000 more than the uh, manual keratoplasty so my choice is femto for all the cases all optical cases go for femto yeah. What about the interface if you do a microkeratome assisted uh, anterior lamellar keratoplasty and the femto assisted? Like uh, in some of the platforms, if you go deeper, the uh, plane is not regular. Yeah, so with this machine, this has a, uh, you can change the 